Good morning. Uh, good morning, Ibrahim. Good morning, Olamide. And good morning to all our viewers across the globe. A very beautiful Thursday morning. Hope you were not disturbed with the rain. Yeah, well, no, yeah. no rain. Just, li no. just light showers, scattering of showers. In well, for big boys like, like you, uh, you are not always <laughs> affected. <laughs> but then, if you look at um, you know the issue in the front burner this morning regarding the NNPCL, uh, you know, reading the riot act, saying we are you know getting boats on the ground to fight you know oil theft and all of that. So, if given the Nigeria's uh, Nigeria reliance or Nigeria's reliance on oil, uh, what implications do you think? Uh, the declaration of emergency on the crude oil production would have for the country's economy. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I read yesterday the reaction of the Group GMD of uh, NNPCL, uh, Mele Keari, saying they are declaring state of emergency. And the first thing that came to be is uh, when you look at it when it comes to governance, when you declare state of emergency is a threat to the number one citizen of that particular state. So what he's saying by implication is, uh, even for me that is managing it, you should start considering an exit for me. That's an area where I looked at because you cannot be overseeing something. Mele mm -hmm. joined this organization right from the time of the last administration with so much speculation that it might not actually be retained you know, for the second time. Yeah. And uh, when you look at the track record from its inception to date, what have we achieved? We have a capacity of having over 2,400 uh, barrels per day, but we've been swinging between less than a million to 1,200. I think currently, as at the end of uh, uh, May, we are about uh, 1,200, uh, 1 1.2 million uh, barrels per day. And you ask, what are the major challenges? We've seen a lot of visits to the, the to site where he has raised alarm. We have over 500 and something uh, pipeline plugs to this. Enough of some of those problems. Where are, what are the solutions? Where are we? Declaring what at this point in time, I asked myself, how many of the corporates have we been able to pin down and uh, punish to serve as deterrent to others. We've not had that. We should stop these rhetorics when we go to conferences, when we go, we have been invited to give keynote address, we display as if we are working. Enough, which, in fact, I don't expect words from him. I expect action to see where we, because knowing fully well that this is a key thing in the development of our country in terms of revenue. And you can see, we all celebrated the so-called uh, uh, Dangote refinery. You and I, are, we, we know our position. At least for the first time, I heard people saying that uh, I can see how vocal the uh, uh, owner of Dangote uh, refinery, I, I mean Aliko Dangote himself, has been speaking of late. Uh, you, you, in your initial uh, program this morning, we saw Senate setting up panel on the issue he raised, which was countered by the uh, downstream uh, 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 sector to say no. They did not uh, import so. But we are hearing from uh, the Senate setting up ad hoc committee. I think the major problem we have is that we, 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 we discuss so much, we speak so much without any action. Because I expect that by now we will find some people culpable, punished. Because when you talked about plugging all these pipes to the NNPC pipes, it's not business for you and I that you do with 1 million naira or 10 million or 100 million. Or you need sophisticated equipment. So where is the surveillance? Where people are to plug in into that? These are things that are not done within one hour, two hours, three hours. This takes a lot of days, months, for you to actually set up, dug the well and everything. So if we are declaring well at this point in time, I think the first thing the president needs to do, my personal view, is that we should have an, uh, an extra. We can't have the same person doing the same thing for us without having a risk. And we cause this to be a reliance. Look at the investment that uh, NNPC had in uh, Dangote. And up to now, we are not even having any major input except for, for, for uh, AGU that is actually being shared. We have gases that we are flaring. We cannot improve on our power. We still talked about the scarcity of, 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 of gas. When we are, uh, it's on record that Nigeria is one of the first 10 in uh, flaring of gases. So you ask yourself, what exactly are we doing? 
big timely entrenched in some of these resources, but we cannot benefit. Just one. Look at how we are struggling. We can only hear from the power sector increase in it. Do we have increase in generation? The answer is no. You keep hearing about grid collapse, you know, every now and then. We have not. So where are those things going? And we have someone at the end of our fear coming to declare, or which one are we declaring? That tomorrow we start talking about destroying some of those things that some people have illegally acquired that should have been a source of putting things together. Because I keep asking myself, can't we make law if indeed we confirm that you have illegally diverted what should have been a revenue generation to us? Why destroying it? I still ask myself that question. Why can't we make law and say, okay, this has actually been discovered and we've been able to confiscate it from the ends of the people. Can we now do the proper thing, channel it up, to so let it be additional revenue? But what we keep hearing is, let's destroy it. Let's blow it up. It's just something that is worrisome. But now that he has called for a state of emergency, I think the presidency uh, or the president will act by making sure that, okay, you, that you are there, I think you need to step down. Let's have a change of button and see what someone else can do, since you yourself seems not to have a deeper understanding of what is going on. Mm. Mm. And uh, since we're also talking about the reactions to that statement yesterday, um, if I may relay the sentiment of some Nigerians about the fact that when you hear a state of emergency, not many Nigerians are really excited about uh, a state of emergency and you know, believe that there will be swift action coming into place following that announcement. Uh, so... Uh, why should we take this announcement by military seriously this time? And how will this declaration you know, help in the ongoing efforts you know, to uh, refine some of our refineries? Yeah, uh, I think we need to take it uh, with all seriousness, knowing fully well that this is uh, Nigeria runs a mono economy. We rely so much on this. We've been talking about diversification into other sectors, but we've not gotten any lead way in it. When you talked about solid minerals, we've actually had a lot. But the ministry keep telling me, I, I, I read the other time, and I listened to the Minister of Solid Mineral, which we consider as area of diversification, complain there are cartels that is really not making those things. So when you look at your main source of uh, uh, revenue, uh, maybe I'll put it hypothetically as a businessman, mm -hmm. you look, go all out to protect that and uh, see what best you can do. And that's why we must take this with all seriousness. Don't forget that we, we waited this long uh, 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 for Dangote Refinery to come upstream so that we can possibly have a reduction. Because what we had then, even when they were investing so much into Dangote Refinery, is that once they start production, we'll see a reduction. And I think we've had a feel from the pro diesel, the AGOs that is actually, at least before it started uh, dishing out into the, uh, to the marketers, who had about 1,700 per, uh, per liter, which when he actually came on board, it was reduced to around 1,000, 1,200, which is reasonable. So if you look at the percentage of reduction, if you have that, even in PMX, if you start producing and we give the support that is expected, possibly the cost of fuel might drop down from around five, six, uh, 580 that we are currently 600, 700 to around 300. Do you know the implication of that? The current hardship that the country, the, the citizen of the country have faced is pegged on that uh, 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 cost of uh, production. Mm -hmm. When you talked about fueling your vehicle, People find it difficult now to move around. And when you don't move around, logistics plays a major role. People can say that we have the advent of uh, technologies. You can have meetings online. But do you know there are certain set of people that you need to be on ground to have physical discussion if those things must be. So when those things are not there, when you look at the operating cost of an average organization, what is eating at into it is energy cost. An energy cost can be divided into two. Just in your headline this morning, you heard about you read about the increase in the cost of band A customer to 20950 cover. That on its own has its impact on the bottom line of every manufacturer. That's one. When you now talk about the logistics at which your staff move around, you ask yourself, your printing cup keeps increasing. Can the consumer that you are 
uh, producing for? Can they accommodate that? The answer is no. So you can imagine if significantly we can start refining this product. I'm addressing that you why this must be taken yes, with all yes. seriousness. That if we can address this issue and we are able to get for I'm not even advocating that you should sell for 150 or 180 that we have before. Let's do 50% of what we have currently. Talked about 250 something or 260 mm -hmm. naira. You will see the level at which everything will definitely drop down. Where are we with the promise given on the CNG buses mm. to relieve uh, uh, transportation? People now, uh, you know, <laughs> in, in a relaxed manner now, you know, adopt the level of trekking. They say it's a form of exercise. But will you want to trek if you have those cheap uh, uh, or less way of communicate, committing yourself to wherever you're going? The answer is no. At least everybody wants comfort for themselves. So it is very key. It is germane. I can tell you if today, the cost of uh, uh, PMX, yeah. DPK, and all other things that comes out of it is reduced by 50%. You will see the way at which we will have a relief as citizens of this country. But if you go this route, that we are even struggling to make production uh, or, pro, uh, or give uh, access of crude oil to Dangote that we call our own, yeah. <laughs> it's quite disheartening that we may not and, be going and, anywhere. And that's actually where I want to take you up on. Because um, Dangote had you know, said... The oil mafia, the mafias we have in oil are way, way uh, stronger, dangerous, difficult than the drug mafia. And, you know, this, this is very, very instructive because if we have been looking at uh, Dangote for reprieve, even though the federal government had promised, you know, all the four refineries to, you know, come back upstream, um, you know, so we get, start getting oil there. But then Dangote seems to be the immediate solution that we are having. But Dangote is facing problem. You mentioned the IOC who came back to say, no, they are not uh, denying Dangote access to crude oil and all of that. They're not selling uh, to Dangote and all of the sabotage. In fact, he even said he was advised against, you know, uh, constructing that uh, refinery. Uh, do, do, you, do you see Dangote, you know, solving at least a few percent of some of the challenges we're facing in the oil industry based on the way we are looking forward to uh, is, is business. Uh, Shita, pardon me, I'm not optimistic at all. Mm. And I don't think we are going anywhere. Because I ask myself the question, who are these so-called cartels and cabals in every arm that can impact on the common citizen? I keep asking myself, are they bigger than the government? The question is, if the government cannot challenge the status quo, it's only passed a message that they are part of it. Because the other time when this uh, administration came about, a lot of hope. We saw the uh, 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 Ministry of Solid uh, Mineral as one of the areas where we can diversify. We saw the creation of the uh, Blue Marine uh, uh, Ministry, uh, where the former governor of uh, Ocean State, you know, Blue Economy, came on board to see where we can also generate revenue. But Chita asked me, where are we today? All we keep hearing is that there are cabals, there are cabals, there are cabals. Are they bigger than the government, which they all swore to actually provide good livelihood to? I heard Mr. President clearly, I will create a relief. My coming on board is to create relief for this country. We are not even going to the constitution that state that is their primary responsibility. How do you think it's easy to extricate the, the our economies from the jaws of these uh, cabals? Because these same people are the one who somewhat, one way, are driving the economy, you know, supposedly driving the economy. And if they are tackled, they definitely will fight back. You've always said it too, that corruption will always fight back. So how do you think they can, you know, save the Nigeria's economy, especially the mainstay? From the jaws of if corruption will fight back, I, I have said this time to that number, which you will confirm to me. Are there consequences for wrongdoing in this country? The answer is no. We only get that to the low trading set of people. You don't want to touch some people because you feel touching them might create a problem. We have said it. It is not about you. Put up a system that will expose some of the wrongdoings of the so-called power that be in the sector put up those systems that is the system that we expose them and you have nothing to say that okay this is what we have said are you aware that a lot of those people at times they evade taxes that is supposed to be another source of revenue and nothing happens to them because the next thing is we start from the grassroots 
If you see some people that are very close to the government, if you try them on the road and they even followed one, they will tell you, who are you? Mm -hmm. I will call your boss and the next thing you are fired. And you know, most of the time, when you try to do the right thing, even from the lower kidder, the way and manner you'll be treated that, uh, please, I, I don't want you to go that route. Let's pardon. Until we are intentional as government to make sure that we punish people that are identified to the problem. We keep hearing that, Kabbalah, don't they have face? Don't they have name? Don't they have things that you can track? I, keep, I, I, I read yesterday about uh, EFCC telling us so much diversions by N, N, NDAs. Can we put names to some of these things? If we pick one, two, three, I, I'm sure it will set signal to others. But this is our problem because there are no consequences. We just rub those things on the surface. And then after a little while, we hear of the beginning. You know, we have good starting point mm -hmm. of blowing those things, you know, that everybody will feel we are working. At the tail end, what will you hear? We've heard about custom season, so many things. Are there no faces behind those things? You know, that are causing unrest and uh, insecurity no, no, in the no, country. Their faces are usually showed when it comes to, you know, people that are arrested by the Nigerian customs. We, we get to see them. We get to see the how, how many of those? You pick the boys that are on the street. You don't pick the sponsors. Until you deal with those things from the roots, not picking it on the surface. That is the major problem that we are faced with. Okay. Each time we talk of all the cabals in every sector, in every angle, I ask myself, is it that they are faceless? That we cannot, because the major problem we are having, as I speak to you, we are blessed with every natural resources you can talk about. Intellectual capacity is there. The only thing we lack is not having a system that has given an openness to corruption. If we can address corruption to make people to desist from doing wrong things, I can tell you. Do you know as we speak, people still divert from, I've asked this question. With Mr. President that I know today, where are we on the Ministry of Humanitarian Resource uh, uh, Ministry? Mm. We just heard the story. It, it was on the burning discussion then. Uh, really, really. As of today, where are we? I've even asked myself, is that ministry still functioning after the exit of that particular minister? Corruption is a major problem, and it's because we lack a system. If you go to an organization where there are no proper structure or system for everybody to, you just come, do your own. So if there's ever need for you to make enough, you just make it and you go, and nothing will happen. So I think that is the major problem where we need to address, not only in the, in, in the, in the oil and gas sector, but across all structure. You, you can hear, you read in your dailies, the cost of drugs when it comes to the health sector. How much of it are we actually putting on board? How much of the revenue that we are generating is actually impacting on the common man? When you give resources out, go and carry this out, how much of the monitoring uh, uh, do we do in making sure that those things are done? If we're able to put those systems up, shit, I can tell you, there is no place to be than Nigeria because the resources that we are blessed with if we start tapping into it legally and start generating revenue, is it gold you want to talk about? Is it bitumen? Is it coal? Is it lead? It's enormous. And you can have it across all the state. And I'm sure with that, if you nip corruption at the board to bring the cartel down, the country will be definitely be better off for it. And uh, this will seem like a repeat, uh, repetition, but uh, you are saying that uh, a group of individuals are holding millions of Nigerians to, to ransom in the area of the economy. But... Um, uh, let me quickly follow up on uh, the last bits of your comments and on uh, the reaction about uh, Dangote's, uh, what, he made, what he said about uh, Somayos' sabotaging the refinery. Uh, let's not also forget that uh, uh, the managing director of the NMPC has also you know, acknowledged that there were some principalities, he mentioned that word, in the sector that were trying to you know, uh, sabotage operations. Uh, how will this state of emergency address some of these concerns? Uh, it seems that even if we do as much, if we are producing as much barrels per day and all that, uh, we will still need to remove these individuals who are holding the nation to ransom. You see, when you, when you see something and you say something, you must substantiate it. Most of the time, we just come, talk, and we don't back it up with fact. Mm. Maybe for we finance people, we don't actually acknowledge that. So you don't come and say somebody is stealing. Mm. You must have evidences to say, ah, there is misappropriation in this unit. Mm. That means you've carried out a review of that particular place and you come out. So for you to say there are cabals, mm. that means there are individuals 
that you have seen you that are actually you saw them that are actually you know challenging the the the, 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 the system, system that you have actually put in place can we put names to some of these things and it's a problem that is not just only in the past uh, in the oil and gas sector it's across board do you remember during the last administration even from uh, 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 dubai they gave names of people that they called sponsors of some yes. of these uh, uh, terrorism and the likes. Up till today, have we seen anyone that is actually being punished for that act, even when they have those things you know, in, in front of us? Until the government is intentional to know that the reason for their existence is for the citizen that they are actually are, are, are working against currently, we go nowhere. If he is complaining about it, we can declare war. Who are you? With this statement for me, we are, we are not going anywhere. Is it not a war? You are declaring war against who? Hmm. Against faceless set of people that you cannot mention their names. So why are you calling for the war? If you must call for war, you must be specific to say, no, we are going to this area. We want to fight it all like that. You have identified it. But as we speak, you are declaring war. You said you have enough uh, uh, equipment to fight those. Against who? Uh, Where that's, are that's we? Said, if, if, there, if there is a very strong system, a, a non porous system, that this can actually help to mitigate against... Is the, system, it, it, is the system on ground? They are the same set of people that bypassed the system. So because I will ask myself the question, if the group managing director of NNPCL is coming to say, we have over 500 illegal pipes plugged to our, natural, uh, to, 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 to our, our pipeline, yeah. how did we get that? If you have identified it, how have you been able to stop this from furthering? As a matter of what we see is the, the 500 didn't come within a year. I'm sure they started from 1 to 10 to 20, and we got to 500. Well, well, if you look at it, you know, how uh, impactful has the private contractors you know, to, uh, to, to uh, grant surveillance or to give sub, uh, sub, uh, surveillance to uh, oil pipelines and all of those places where we have sabotage um, the, the, the sabotaging of the oil pipelines and the NNPC generally, how effective do you think they've been? Because if you look at the, the, uh, the importance of unraveling the intricate networks of, uh, involving these illicit activities, we have the internal, uh, internal collaborators and also the external, external. Collab collaborators, including the international uh, people, even within the community. Because sometimes we heard the Nigerian army saying that, the Nigerian military saying they destroyed some of these you know, uh, oil, oil bunkers and bunkers and all of them, arrested some. And then some of these uh, lo locals, maybe the leaders or you know, people who, who live there, go back to tell those people that, okay, the Nigerian army, the military are gone, or the security agencies have gone, you guys can come back again. Or they also you know, tend to blow the whistle against their own selves. So if you're fighting them, and people within that locality is not helping. How do you solve it? Yeah, the people within the locality will not help because they are gaining from it. It's when you gain from something that you, you see the greedy nature of every citizen. It's what is taking us to where we are. So when you are benefiting, like we always say in the art space, when people are benefiting from wrongdoing, mm -hmm. they will come and tell you, oh, this is God's blessing and God's grace. When it's other way around. So after all, it's, it belongs to us. It's our, it's, our, it's our property, so we have control over it. But when it's on the other side, they say they are frustrating them and making them not to benefit for, from what and belongs to them. You know, by marginalizing the world. So it's, it's, it's something that needs reorientation of our side because most of the time, what people do is make enough noise, get involved in that particular thing and see what can be beneficiary to you and you move on. Otherwise, by now, I, I, I would have expected that we should have, have an increase in what we've been lingering between 1, 1 million, 1.2 barrel for over, over years, when the capacity is far higher than what we are. So you keep asking yourself, we started from 1, 2, 3, and today we are talking of over 500 of this particular thing. So I, I feel that uh, the, the cabals, the faceless cabal in every agency, in every sector, needs to be, we need to be intentional. There must be this political will. I am even saying that since the NNPCL GMD is coming out that we are declaring war, we should come and I mention to us who is the war against. 
We need to have an understanding of that. We can't be fighting a faceless war against people that we don't know. Maybe by the time you are able to mention one, two, three, you know it has a way uh, this thing goes. You mention one, two, three, you say, no, take it cool now. Uh, we are many. You know, you start you know, unraveling the other people that you don't even know. But as we speak, not a single person is actually, so you are saying you are fighting war, declaring state of emergency against who okay. that you are unable to identify. It's a problem, and I think we need to address it because I can tell you the hardship in the land is enormous, and the citizens are actually complaining. And the only solution we consider is that we need to bring down the cost of energy because it's strategic to the growth of our economy. The SMEs, as we speak, are, cannot breathe. And we need the survival of SMEs if we must grow as a nation. So talking about uh, the effect on this, on the average Nigerian, we are roughly around 1.2 million, like uh, you mentioned. And the benchmark is 1.7 uh, million. The GMD is also saying we could actually do uh, 2.25 uh, million. But then the average Nigerian is probably saying... Uh, you can't have these conversations here. We come back and still, you know, repeat the same thing. How will this, you know, declaration really have effects on uh, the cost of petrol? Is that really factored in this conversation, even if we, you know, make as much efforts like you suggested? Yeah, well, uh, it, it is disappointing that we are even hearing that uh, even if Dangote start production tomorrow, it does not amount to reduction in the cost of those things. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what I still can't understand the factor. And so but, it's not going to actually... But one thing we know, maybe from my own finance perspective, okay. at least you are removing the cost of freight of bringing those commodities, mm. one. Two, uh, the uh, byproducts that we are not accounting for can be used as input into other arms of the economy. If people are not speaking in that area. Because most of the time I come out to say, from my pa finance perspective, I'm not just looking at you taking that crude oil. There are other byproducts that can be an input to other uh, arms. You can imagine fertilizer coming out of it, you know, bitumen, grease, you know, all these other things that will serve as input to other arm of the economy, which will come at a lower cost. So when you put all those factors together, it will definitely create, uh, uh, you know, employment for our citizens. But a situation where you export out some of these uh, products, you are not refining it locally, uh, what amount to it is that they will bring back for you that PMX that you actually requested for and sell those other byproducts. You know, when if myself and uh, Shita, we are having a business conversation, you have uh, uh, a cassava, and I'm, you are asking that help me process it to Gary. I will give you the Gary. What about the other byproducts? That will make for it. it becomes a revenue on my part, and that's why those people we are actually moving those crude oils so, are living large on it. Those are areas that will be more beneficial when we start producing this thing locally, and that's why some of us have said, even if from the OPEC quota that you claim that you want to generate revenue from, we have said this is what I, I, I feel should do. Can we reduce our quota to the the OPEC? and concentrate on making sure that we refine and give Nigeria a meaningful life. When you reduce that, don't generate revenue from ITSA because the revenue you are generating from the crude oil you are setting is not impacting on us. But when you are able to put that into local production, Dangote will grow, engage more people in terms of employment. Those other uh, 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 byproducts from him can be used to develop other areas, which will create more employment for people. So when you tackle the issue of uh, employment, what you have done is that you have reduced drastically this issue of insecurity that we are talking about. Because an idle man is devil workshop. A lot of people see every day by day, as we speak, the SMEs the, 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 that are supposed to be the middle class engaging people up are downsizing every day. And when you downsize, what do you expect them to do? Yeah. Just yesterday, with the little thing that happened in Lagos, see people starting extorting citizens like them, mm -hmm. all because they want to pass through uh, across the water. Mm -hmm. How do you account for those some of those things? So I feel that if we are able to pump in more crude into Dangote refinery and we, we, we un uh, unravel mm -hmm. the mafias, the okay. cartels that are there to allow them to produce, right. it will be more beneficiary to every citizen because it will ease our burden and the economy will grow from Absolutely. It. And some will be wondering what are byproducts from uh, the crude oil. You know, some of them, we have the petrochemicals, the solvents, so forth. 
carbon it's black, enough. lubricant, yeah. base oils, you know. They are, to, they are enormous. No, but we are not looking in to, that to, area. To, to, to mention. <laughs> but then, uh, we just have to leave it here. Chartered Accountant and Public Affairs Analyst, Shesong Kwande. Thank you so much for your insights on this topic.